Welcome everyone to our first, uh, to our second Root Talk session on the second day of uh, Language Learning Today conference. Our topic is still English as global language and uh, I explained the concept of the Root Talks just briefly in our first Root Talk session with Fluency MC and uh, English Funcast. So it's uh, inspired by the TED Talks but rather than having very accomplished people um, in the in that space we thought uh, it would be more fun for you to uh, actually hear about um, some of the more innovative approaches uh, approaches to uh, teaching and learning English in the 21st century um, just to quickly introduce myself, my name is Kirsten Winkler, I'm the founder of EduQuest. EduQuest is an online media site and we work a lot with uh, startups mainly in that space. So we always try to identify trends in online education or e-learning. My co-organizer for this event and conference is Schiff. Schiff is the co-founder of uh, Language Lab and also my reliable co moderator and host for these uh, hangout sessions. Um, we are very happy to have, as I said, two more root talks for you. One is uh, Sylvia, she is known as um, ESL brain and um, shares all kinds of um, interesting motivational, uh, psychological um, things of uh, on how to make English uh, more engaging, more collab collaborative, collaborative. Sorry, and um, our second presenter for today is Mao. You might have um, heard him speak and take part in some of the uh, previous panels and Mao is going to introduce us more in detail to his um, creation and, and project uh, Trippen. Um, from the organizational side of things, um, you can follow the conference also on Twitter. The Twitter hashtag is pound LLTCon in one word pound LLTCon. You can also watch this directly on YouTube, so therefore uh, we can also um, integrate and ask the panelists your YouTube uh, comments and questions. And finally, the stream is also directly integrated on Facebook, so you can also ask questions directly via Facebook. Um, Schiff has prepared a quick survey. Um, he's going to tweet out during the session to just ask you guys um, how you liked it, uh, was it the right format, what was good, what can we do better. So just uh, please just take two or three minutes of your time to um, answer this uh, short survey at the end. And I give it over to Sylvia. And uh, yeah, she is going to introduce us and you more to her concept and approach to teaching English today. So Sylvia, very happy to have you on. And when you are ready, um, you can quickly introduce yourself or jump right into your presentation, whatever fancies you. Okay, is my microphone working now? Yes. Okay. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm delighted to be here today, and I'm just going to share uh, my ideas about teaching with you very quickly. And I've prepared a presentation just uh, to let you see what I mean and to get through lots of ideas very fast before we come to Mao, who's going to expand on everything I say with some very, very special effects. So, uh, just a moment. Um, so, I can get my presentation up. Okay, uh, can everybody see my screen? 
Not yet. Okay. Oh, not yet. Okay, I'll wait for a moment. If not click on the screen sharing again. Okay. Um. Okay, here we go. Okay, I think this is clear, yes? Yep. Okay, so I'm starting off with a detailed mind map to give you the big picture about brain-friendly learning. So when I think of teaching or preparing content or anything to do with my work, I always think about how to engage the imagination of students. And the good news here is that we don't have to be super performers or, you know, we don't have to be specially talented comedians or people who want to take the stage and be the centre of attention and make our students laugh. Because what is really more effective is putting the spotlight on our students and allowing them to be the stars of their own show. Um, so when you realise that we just need to kind of uh, plan things so we can guide students towards their creations and being involved in their work, then everything seems much easier and it gets much more creative because you're kind of off the hook as a centerpiece and you can just watch what your, ch what your students can do and it can be really amazing. Also, um, this may look as if I'm speaking about small children, but I teach adults mostly online and I teach mostly business and exams classes. So I'm not talking about special creative classes or literature or anything, but just to, just to teach language, it's much more effective to use the arts, storytelling, comics, poetry, games, mind mapping and music. These are six examples, but the examples are endless. This is just one tiny piece of a huge picture because Imagination is endless and so is creativity. Anyway, this map just is based on technology and the brain. Firstly, because I was always interested in how the brain works before I went online. And then when I started using technology, I, I couldn't believe what I was able to create myself because uh, there's so much we can do if we have ideas. And then I got my students doing things. And what they could do, that was... It was a brilliant discovery and all of my students can make great comics and write great poems and tell great stories and they do that to learn vocabulary for exams and to remember things and to use their grammar. We get tables of grammar from course books and they transform form them into comics and stories or we get music and they get deep into the music, into the words and then we can tell stories about the song. So all of these things are they're all connected. Each branch has some ideas, but all of these ideas really can join everything. They're all connected. So all, all of these are good for the brain because they're visual, imaginative, or they're intrapersonal, meaning they help students to engage with their own minds and their own hearts and to express what's inside instead of just looking at course books that have nothing to reach a student emotionally or nothing to grab the imagination because they're functional, too functional and too logical, left brain, dead flat pages of facts. So students can take that. My students are able to take anything from a course book and they're able to transform them. And that's how they learn, and it's just really nice. So uh, I want to make this PowerPoint available afterwards because I've only got 10 minutes to speak, okay? Um, anyway, the mind map is a visual example of how you can uh, have ideas that will go on forever. You know, so this mind map could probably be built across walls or the Great Wall of China and never stop. Okay, but you've got the picture of what I'm going to discuss. Now, what's the most important question facing teachers? Um, I thought about this question today, and according to Einstein, the ultimate question should be, is this a friendly universe? And Einstein said that when he was considering what people are going to do with technology. So 
he said that if we are fearful and if we are afraid and we think it's an unfriendly universe, we are going to be defensive and we are going to build defensive weapons and build great walls and we're going to close our minds and fight and cause destruction and destroy our environment. Okay? Then he said if if we think that we are just uh, puppets on a string and it's neither friendly nor unfriendly, then we'll always just be helpless and we won't feel powerful to do anything but if we believe it's a friendly universe then we reach out to others and we share and humanize our life experience and our learning experiences so that's why I asked this question about learning is this a brain friendly learning environment so Okay, we can ask ourselves that. Uh, I've been speaking to teachers all over the world on Facebook for three years, and most of us come from places where you've got four walls in the classroom and no technology. And old-fashioned course books, old-fashioned methodologies, and old-fashioned ideas, where there is no professional development because the owners of the schools want you to go in and teach and pass out some tests and they do not want, they don't even consider what professional development even is. And they don't do that because their governments don't support them and they don't get paid to think. So, beyond the hour. Anyway, but we've got the tools and we've got to do things unofficially if we want to enjoy our work. Or if you're freelance like me and other freelance teachers, uh, we have no, we are doing this for ourselves because we're working independently. And this is where our pleasure in work comes from. So, we've got the tools, technology, and what should we do with them? This picture represents what I see in a lot of schools that, okay, maybe they're not exactly resisting, maybe they just have no money and no resources, but uh, there are ways to try as much as you can, which I have written in a few articles, and I've got 12, 14, I've got 14 articles linked to this PowerPoint that you can read later about what to do if you have a school with no technology. Okay, um, so feelings are the most important thing. Now, I think we have always known that, um, and parents have always known that because that's how humans behave. But when we are in school, uh, logic seems to push feelings aside. And for some reason, we have never known our own nature and we've never realized that we need first the heart and then the mind. Feelings go first and then logic. So we've had the cart before the horse for a very, very long time. Uh, like here in Greece, in the play schools, it's perfect. It's heart first and then logic. But when they reach the age of seven, everything stops. Art stops. Color and fun, everything stops. So these are extremely important. And this iceberg, this iceberg represents what I think about what I do in my work. Because the top level uh, above, the ice, above the level here, the tip of the iceberg is our environment and behavior and what we see. And that's a lot. But there's a lot more underneath. And we don't know how to go underneath because we're not uh, psychologists, we're not Freud, and we're not, maybe we try to be, but we're not. But we don't have to do that because our students will bring all of this to us with the stories. So here's a quote from Ken Robinson. The arts aren't just important because they improve math scores. They're important because they speak to parts of children's being which are otherwise unlocked. Um, we're all children. I'm still a child. So... And I teach adults, so this is not just about children. But with storytelling, with poetry, with music, with comics, pictures, visuals, inspiration, all of these things below the ice, below the level here will come up and students will share everything with us. So this is it. We've got to light our fire. So this is from the song Come and Baby Light My Fire by The Doors. I hope you know that song. And these are the things that will help people to learn, okay? Imagination, exaggeration. So if, if we want to teach something, it's good to have lots of colors or make something bigger than it really is. And it's just more fun that way, okay? Um, a lot of laughter, but that doesn't mean we have to be gifted uh, entertainers. 
we could just reach students on their level and they will bring their own laughter. Um, census is, you know, multi-sensory experience, uh, which you will also see later with Ma when you see his website. Uh, multi-sensory with video, audio, art, everything, and lots of color. And these are the way we want to see our brains lighting up. Okay, so this, I've got this here as a cliche, on Facebook all over the world, uh, all teachers resonate with the same complaint. So I'm not here to tell you anything new about uh, what's wrong. So the cartoon says, I see you did well in school, but what real world skills do you have? And yes, he can take tests. So I'm calling this a cliche because for three years on Facebook, uh, I've seen everyone talking about this, but it's in a helpless kind of way. So no one is, um, we're, it's helpless because we're caught in the same mindset and the same trap of helplessness, and that's why it's like a cliche or a tradition. Um, mm -hmm. And the question is, so yeah, this is like just this? Kirsten quickly. Um, yeah, you have to advance the slides for us because we are still seeing slide number one. Oh here. no! <laughs> okay, um, if I because go we, back, you were talking about the cliche. Yes. We, 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 I, we don't see it. <laughs> but I've already put forward four slides. I'm going to go back to see if you can see the changes. Uh, and the iceberg. Can you see any of this? Okay. Um, um, right. Can right. you see this change here? here? No, I think you might be changing on the wrong window. If you go back to PowerPoint rather than the presentation. If I go, if I go where? where? Oh. oh. Yeah. Like here. Like here. Yeah, that works. Oh, oh sorry. Sorry. Okay. okay. So I've got no, three. I've got three. <coughs> I talked about the mind map. Um, here. <coughs> okay. This was the question. This was. I don't know why it's slow now. Okay, because I'm screen sharing. Okay, this was the question of what to do with our tools. Okay, it's just moving a bit slowly. You'll see, okay, this was about feelings, and this is the iceberg, I mean, with capabilities, beliefs and values, identity and purpose below the surface, but if we use stories or other creative uh, ideas, students would bring all that to us, where they can express themselves and learn completely. Okay, the next slide was similar, it just had a quote from Ken Robinson. Um, now, there may not be much time left for me to talk, but you can stop me whenever it's necessary because um, hopefully people can, will be able to get the whole PowerPoint later. So, yeah, okay. Okay, this was a nice one with the uh, colors that's coming. Anyway, uh, yeah, about the cliche, about thinking that we have to teach to tests, uh, that means we're in a trap that we can't get out of. Um, what I want to say is that we could just take those exam books that we get in school and we could just take the meaning that they're trying to teach and use it in a different way. So if I'm going to teach grammar, I can tell my students to make up a dialogue using the grammar. Okay, or they can find songs, or I can find songs that express that grammar. Um, there are so many ways we can do it. Okay, this was the page you missed, which is I, one of my favorite ones, because I, I just like that color, and I think it shows what we're trying to do. Uh, this was the page where I was asking, does it have to be like this? Why do we have to be trapped in that mindset where we feel helpless against the systems? And it seems to be the same in every country, almost. 
<coughs> apart from Finland, I think, or Scandinavian countries. Um, okay, I'll show you one more slide and then I'll just go back to, to speak to you because it's too slow. I just had one more. I have lots of slides about... I have lots of slides about stories, poetry, music, and all of that, and they've all got links, lesson plans, um, multimedia content, and articles and blogs. Okay, so it's it's a big collection of stuff you can see later. Um, this was an example of a story. I had a student studying for proficiency um, with an enormous amount of very, very, very difficult vocabulary. And most of the vocabulary was the kind they use only in tests and people do not use very much in real life. Um, and once I said, okay, let's try some stories, uh, we did it just for idioms. And then he, he, he asked me to do a big writing project just for the vocabulary. And we wrote a huge story together. And this was, when you read the story, you won't believe that a student wrote it, but he drove the whole uh, uh, script of the story. And he tried to use the words, and then, you know, when he made mistakes, I corrected his mistakes. So it's completely his story, but my help in correction and fitting things in properly. So he might have had an unformed idea that I might have had to change the syntax on or use a more appropriate collocation. So anyway, I've used stories with beginners and with proficiency students. No matter how easy or difficult, it's very effective. Anyway, um, I'll just go back because the presentation is too slow. Uh, okay, right. Sorry that was slow. Um, okay. So the point is that students are able to do everything and we have to stop managing everything. We just have to sh show them, you know, where to look and how to try. Okay, so uh, like with music, I, I, do, I do my share when it comes to presentations because I like my pres presentations to be interactive and colorful because that awakens up their imaginations and then they can create some things, okay? Now, also, I teach completely online most of the time. I have some local students and my children, but most of the time, I'm completely online. So my presentations are for virtual classrooms or they can be for managing courses, uh, you know, on learning management systems. So we can motivate students uh, in self-paced courses where they can go in and they can find their comics, their videos, uh, their challenges, their, uh, and they can work and share with each other in a huge course. And then they can share on social networks. So it's, it's all about the community. First, we can start a little hub of creativity and then they share it everywhere. And I've seen that on Facebook with poetry, stories, ideas. They drive each other. We Teachers don't have to do anything. Okay, so to get deep into everything I've shared, you've got to go through all my PowerPoint and all the links and lessons. And now Ma will share his screen and he's going to show uh, that he, my things that I, I think about or other teachers everywhere think about, he has brought to a new level in virtual reality and creativity and interactivity for students. So I'm finished and I'll sit back and listen. Thank you so much, Sylvia. So as long as I am going um, through the stream and see what questions come up, uh, for you on Twitter or Facebook. Um, I give Schiff a first chance if he wants to ask you a question um, already now. Otherwise, uh, as you suggested, we give it over to Mao and um, give him his talk. Listen to his talk. Yeah, I'll just ask one quick question. You mentioned a lot of your learners are adults and working professionals. So I imagine they're learning for this purpose of work. Um, could you give us like a specific example of how you relate songs or comics or any of these things to someone's job or someone's vocation? Okay, so I'll talk, I'll give you some ideas for business students. Okay, um, like at the moment, 
moment I'm teaching some Japanese business students and they they presented me with a very basic program of lessons that I was supposed to follow. So it was some business dialogues and then a list of words and that was the whole thing. So um, we just started making up stories with the lists of words. So you make up scenarios. If you think that the whole reason why uh, business students are learning English is because they want to join that meeting and they want to be able to make their presentation and they want to talk to other people. Uh, in the business world, they call they like to call that soft skills. You know, I want to I want to be able to convince people in a negotiation. I want to present my work. I want to socialize. You go out to socialize with your clients. How do you break the ice? How do you be natural? So. They, they can't, there's a big block there with business uh, classes and business uh, clients. Uh, they, they want to be natural. So we do a lot of dialogue, a lot of role play, a lot of storytelling. And then if it comes to music and all of the other types of media, I can put that on their learning management system so that in their free time, this is for business clients who want to do this because I know we all know that some of them are very busy but if they want uh, they can access uh, music lesson plans and uh, develop the social side of their English because it's not just corporate language every corporate leader is really a social expert and we know that from the real world of entrepreneurs all of the best entrepreneurs are diplomats and uh, they are leaders the way they speak they you know they've got charisma they they can reach out to people and that's where money is in business so if you can get the soft skills approach and the rapport and get this across to business clients you're you're giving them a lot of value for their work wonderful so, then we should give mao his fair share of the time as well and are eager to hear more about Trippin, I guess. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right, for those of you who haven't been to any sessions here at uh, LLT Con yet, my name is Mao, and that's short for Mauricio. Uh, I'm Brazilian, and I've been an English teacher for 20 years, teaching mostly in Brazil and Australia. Now, uh, what I've done is developed tripping. I've been working on it full-time for the past two years and it's a tool that has been designed specifically for English language practice. When I say practice, be I say practice and not just learning because it was designed for learners, for teachers, and for English schools alike. Uh, in order to put all that together, uh, well, it's easier said than done. So uh, I'll just uh, share my screen with you now so that you can actually see what tripping is like. Let me see if this... So you see my screen, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right, so this is tripping. Once you start tripping, tripping as you can see, once you begin, you can drag your map all around the world. There are 13 countries around the world, and it, but the story begins in Australia. So that's how tripping is. It's uh, basically the main product here. If you can see my mouse, can you see my mouse around go tripping? Yeah. Okay, so go tripping is the whole story. Now, besides that, to support the whole story which teaches you English or helps you learn English or helps you teach English, uh, there's also my stuff, there's the crew, there's the lounge, there's tunes, and there's lifesavers. I'll come back to each one uh, because they're all interconnected. That's the thing to keep in mind. Tripping has a huge amount of content on it, but it's not all just thrown there. You don't just choose something and do something. You can, but the real language learning or teaching experience on tripping, the real language pra practice experience, um, there is a methodology behind the madness. So uh, I'll start with go tripping here. So once you're on the page, you begin in Australia. Now, Australia, as you can see, once you click on it, opens into the first lesson, which is sunset from the pylon lookout. Now, I've already got 100% on it because, yeah, I speak English really well, and I've done all the exercises perfectly. But once you start on it and you click on it, then you'll see 
all the stories, all the different videos here that make up this first lesson, which is teaching you how to actually see the sunset from the Pylon Lookout in Sydney. Tripping stories, basically, they teach you English and they teach you culture, but they teach you things about these different places around the world that you wouldn't normally uh, see, that you wouldn't normally know. Everyone knows about the Harbor Bridge in Sydney, but no one knows about the Pylon Lookout, and that's a shame. So, can you see the video that I'm, uh, that I'm, the, the video page I'm on now? Hello? Yes. Anybody? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just got to make sure. Make sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so, this is the first, uh, this is the first, this is the first this video. Is the first video. And uh, basically, and, uh, you just, basically watch you just watch it, go to the end, to the click end. on next, click on and you have the exercise. Have now, the exercise. Now, here. Here. has anybody got YouTube open? Because I can hear myself speak. And oh, that's better. Okay. Um, so basically, simple questions. Because, like I say, tripping was designed for learners. Let's begin with the idea of a learner, a person who's who just wants to learn English online. They go to tripping, go to Australia. It's from the low intermediate level up to advanced. And of course, we don't want to keep anybody out, but we don't want to make it too easy for anyone either, which is tricky. But <laughs> basically, we begin with the idea of understanding what this is. So we have who is Trip. You click on who Trip is. You get a little song that tells you how good you are. Who is Pin? Beautiful. So this is basically just easy reading activities you have to know who is but here then you have listening activities. Tripping is a game that helps you learn English. Tripping is a game that helps you eat shellfish. Tripping is a game that helps you learn rubbish. So in this situation what we're doing is we're, we're testing your listening skills not just your reading skills not just your comprehension skills from the exercise. So, these are, so it can Tripping. either be... No, no, no. Yeah, I can get it wrong. No. So, so far we've got Comprehension exercise, a bit of reading, a little bit of reading, a little bit of listening. Now it starts to get interesting. We have more questions, but we also any anything on tripping that is underlined is going to be is going to be a link to our Pictionary. In this case, it's game on, which has an explanation, basically other expressions like let's go, it's on, the game has started, that mean the same thing as game on, and an explanation. Game on means the game has started. And that gives you a situation with a picture with trip and pin in the situation that's being described, as well as an audio link so you can actually practice a bit of your listening as well. Again, this is practice. It's not being tested, but it's an activity. Uh, hopefully after that, you'll be able to get the right answer. Now, if you're in a more advanced learner, you already know what game on means from the idea of the story or from your previous experience. So you're not going to spend time. As you can see, there, there's a timer going on here, which affects your final score. So if you already know, you go ahead and you're quicker. If you don't know, you spend more time on the different support uh, features we have here. So you'll learn, but it'll take you longer. But that's okay, because once you've learned, you can go back and you can do it all over again to get a better score and better time so that your ranking on tripping moves up. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So once I've discovered... Bravo, bravo. So right after that, so like I say, I've got, uh, we've got um, reading exercises, we've got listening exercises, we've also got writing exercises. We've got the support in form of the Pictionary, as you can see here, uh, the different we have to fill in the blanks with in or on. Now, you may know the difference between in or on. You may not know it in these specific situations. Therefore, we all, if we feel that there is something that needs to be explained grammatically or language-wise, and, uh, yeah, you might need some help, we're going to place a lifesaver button here. The lifesaver button is like the Pictionary. You click on it, and, yeah, it saves your life. So there are always all these different videos that will teach you the grammar, not just explaining the concept, because you take things like in and on, there's no real general explanation for it. I mean, there is a general explanation, but it's going to vary. So you really need to give people situations, as you can see here, in where, there's, where it's being there used. There is a bridge resting on four pylons. So not only do people listen and assimilate language, they have to then use it and the system tells them if they're right or if they're wrong. And this all goes towards a score. And if you're wrong, it'll tell you. 
Once again, the timer's running down here. If you know in and on, or you want to guess, or you're the sort of person who actually just wants to rush through things, I mean, there's different learning styles, and there's different ways of learning. So, I mean, we don't want to lock you into one way of learning. We want to give you as much, as, uh, as much um, freedom as possible. You can always go back and get better scores if you want. But once you finish, you get your score. And then you carry on. As I said, you go to the second video. And all these videos make up one story. If you watch all the videos, do all the exercises, get more than 80% in the whole, in all of, in the totality, you then unlock the new story. However, just clicking on videos, watching videos, and uh, answering uh, questions, even if you are typing in things and practicing your writing, practicing your grammar, practicing uh, what it is, whatever it is, it gets old. It gets boring. So after a while, you'll see here we have all these in in each story we have missions as well. As you go on, eventually the platform will take you on different missions. This one is mission one. So what it does basically, it explains what you have to do. I'm going to skip that part for expediency's sake and go on, where clicking on the button next takes you directly to your My Stuff page, which is your profile page. Here is where you have your evaluation so far on audio, story, and word. These are the metrics on tripping. We don't evaluate your, uh, your progress through listening, speaking, writing, and uh, grammar and such and so forth. I mean, we do, but we've translated it into metrics that better, that, that are more appropriate to, uh, to the platform and to what you're doing online. Therefore, audio is your score on how well you've done with your listening. Story is your general comprehension. And word is everything related to, yeah, writing, reading, vocabulary, grammar, the word itself. So this works very well for students to be aware of exactly how well they're doing in each area. Because each exercise that you just saw on Go Tripping has its own score. Now, different, some exercises, they'll have a, mi a mixed score of audio, of word, and of story, depending on how, uh, on how we're, you're being tested. The way I've constructed questions and the answers, they may actually be asking, be demanding more of your listening skills or your writing skills or your grammar skills. So the way I build these questions is based on my experience of 20 years as an English teacher to people of all levels, all nationalities around the world. So putting that all together gives you a fair idea. And as a teacher, that gives you an idea on which areas your student will need a bit of help in. Because that's where it gets interesting here on tripping. Because as a student, you're doing all this alone. You don't need anybody. But to really learn, you're going to need a guide. You're going to need a teacher. You're going to need someone to help you out. So you can evaluate yourself, but it's good as a teacher or as a school. I mean, as a school, you just leave this in your computer lab. Instead of, instead of having students during break going to the computer lab and just going on Facebook and speaking to their friends in their, in their home countries, you've got them playing tripping. Because this, you don't have to worry about a firewall with tripping. You don't have to worry about it being a blocked site. You don't need to worry about downloads. You don't need to worry about anything. Because it's just like, it's just on the web. It opens on a tablet. It opens on a whiteboard. It opens on, a, it works on an overhead projector. It works on a mobile phone. It works everywhere. So you can, all the activities that you do in a classroom, you can adapt to uh, whatever you're doing online and offline. Now, here as a teacher, let's talk about being a teacher. Because once you've evaluated your student, each and every one has their profile. You can get an idea of what they're doing. You can also say, okay, so you've just done, all right, some exercises on go tripping that work with concepts such as there is, there are very versus many, er, in versus on. So, fine, you've learned that, maybe. I mean, you've, you've got the answers correct, but, I mean, have you really learned it? Let's make you do something with it. So you go to missions. Now, you can just add anyone on tripping to your crew, and, they, and then you can give them missions. 
Here, Pin has given me a mission which says, your mission is to look good on LLTCon, which I hope I'm doing. I just added a comment onto that which said, too easy. So basically, you just give your students missions. And by giving people missions, you can, they can be in the format of pictures or text. You can, ask people, you can upload a picture to your students' uh, mission page and ask them to describe it in whatever vocabulary you want them to practice. You can ask them to upload pictures and, them, uh, and they can do whatever they want. So missions are all about teachers giving students activities that will reinforce and practice the ideas that they've either done on their own on go tripping or that they've done in class in, with other uh, kinds of material. Tripping was designed to work on its own, but it was also designed to support everything that's done in the classroom. Every single language, uh, every, every single grammar uh, structure or language uh, topic that you will see in, uh, in a series of headway books from uh, low intermediate to advanced will be presented somewhere in the, tri in the go tripping uh, story. And it will be reinforced by teachers or it will simply be reinforced in an area here that we like to call the lounge. I'll get to that in a minute. But while we're still here on my stuff, you have missions, but you also have stories. Stories come, stories are like badges on tripping. If you manage to complete a whole story like we saw at Sunset up, uh, from the Pylon Lookout, you can then, uh, you, well, you get a story. And the story is basically a comic strip. But fine, you have a comic strip. That's not the cool part. Cool part is you can edit it. So you can just change the pictures. You can just change the text if you want to. You can change the text and write whatever you want here. And that changes what's written here, changes the pictures. I can then save it. And I can share it to Facebook, Twitter, uh, Wenbo, Weiwei, whatever social network on the planet you actually like. All right. And as far as I know, I don't think China's aware of this, of, of tripping. So they probably haven't uh, yeah, blocked it yet. So uh, we'll get to that. We'll worry about that whenever that happens. And finally, we have, if you see here, you see my picture. You have my name. And every day, tripping gives you a different verb to work with. So helps. Helps. People. So that'll be my update for today. And it should appear here, but even if it doesn't, we're still te testing, remember that. You go to your updates part where you have all of the updates that you've done. Every day a different verb, every day a different stimuli to actually make you practice the correct construction of different uh, sentences. And you, as a teacher, I mean, if you want to see how well uh, your student has actually used the verb uh, wants, for example, you type it in the search box and fine. You'll see all of Mo Bushler's use of wants. But as you can see, we're still testing, so that's not working very well yet. So tripping, the point here is that the missions and the updates They've been designed so that teachers can just sift quickly through everything that you've done, that, that students have created, and find exactly what they're looking for, exactly what they're testing for, exactly what they taught, to see how well students are doing. Now, that's your My Stuff page. And besides everything else, it also has your map, which gives us an idea of what countries you've been to and how well you've done. So far, the story begins in Australia, and that's all we have. So I've been to Australia for 6 hours, 22 minutes, and 48 seconds, and I've done 100% of it. Other people on tripping, you can find them on the crew. The crew works with a concept, a mixed concept of Twitter and Facebook. I mean, you can add anyone you want to your crew, but, uh, well, and adding them does not involve them approving it. I can follow anybody I like, so it's a Twitter concept. I add people to my crew, but when I do, they appear in my news feed, so I see everything they've done. And the concept here is add people that you think are interesting. Therefore, their feed will be uh, on your feed, and then you can yes yeah, see what different people in parts of the world that interest you are doing. You can also invite people to trip 
And here's where we got the top 10 trippers. This is where we actually put the, the people that have got the best scores and the lowest time. And so far, my programmer has only put himself here. Um, so we're still working with that. Um, and so besides that, we have my mood. So if you just feel like writing your mood, that goes into the news feed. And it also goes into your update, so it can be checked by your teachers later on. Now, Go Tripping started off with the idea of the, tr uh, the trip around the world, test everything I've told you so far, my stuff and the crew the community. However, the ideas that you are that are presented on go tripping and the ideas uh, that are then reinforced by teachers or by peers in my stuff, uh, well, you see them again. You see them again in different formats in the lounge. The lounge is basically just an area that's got shows. It, well, all we do here, we've got all these different shows that you see at the bottom, and they're quick skits that teach you something about an English a language concept, but then ask you to do a mission about it. So in this case, you have to name your mission hashtag Tom5. If you watch the whole video, you'll understand that we explain the difference between there is and there are, which you have already seen in Go Tripping, but we're just going to ask you to watch a different show about it, most of them are very entertaining, if I may say so myself. And then you have a mission which involves writing in the box, maybe, which involves writing in your missions, maybe, which involves several different interactions, both online and offline. So there's a wide variety of shows that you can choose from here at the bottom. So you can choose depending on what grammar concept you'd like to teach your students, or as a student, what grammar concept you'd like uh, them to actually uh, study. Just leave them at it and supervise, as, as Sylvia said. The idea here is just to be present when necessary, to be more of a guide than a person who actually teaches everything. So the lounge reinforces the concepts that you've already seen on Go Tripping, and the good thing about it is it's open. Even if, you, um, even if you don't want to be a part of Go Tripping or anything else, you can just direct people to specific links here for them to watch it. And as I said before, the share button basically shares with every, everything, every social media site in existence in the universe. From here, the, one of the last things we have is Tunes. Now, Tunes is, a con is just the fun concept. We haven't gamified Tunes yet. Tunes will is basically just video clips of different uh, bands, independent artists and bands who have agreed to let me showcase their work in exchange for free exposure for, for exposure. So every band you like here will have their will have you can watch the video, you can read the lyrics here on the side. You can read the lyrics. Can't for some reason lyrics aren't appearing right now. But you also have the Get More button, which takes you to the artist's website. So if you want to know more about them, you can find out more about them. So for now, Tunes is just a place where you listen to music that you haven't heard before, read lyrics, and have fun. But phase two of tripping, we're going to gamify this as well. Finally, we have Lifesavers. We had to have somewhere where we could just keep all of, the, uh, all of the Pictionary and all of the grammar videos that we've developed to support all the different stages, all the different levels of learning on tripping. As I said before, if you don't know much English, if you're a low intermediate student and you go on Go Tripping, you're going to take longer to get through the exercise because you're going to have to watch the videos, the lifesavers. If not, then you just go through it quickly. Um, and I've gotten a lot of feedback from students from several different levels. The, the more advanced ones, they're really surprised at how, how much they didn't know about what they don't know. Everybody thinks they sort of know how to use present perfect, um, and they don't. But there's simpler stuff than that. Some people speak really, uh, really well, but they, can't, they don't know how to use can or can't. There's all these gaps in learning that need to be reviewed, even for people who speak really well. There's gaps in, the, in what they've learned, and these, these, these gaps have created vices, and the vices are really hard to break, especially if people aren't aware of them. So that's what Go Tripping does. It teaches uh, people who don't know, and it 
provides gap filling for the people who actually already know. And here you have, like I said, a Pictionary. You choose any letter you want, and that'll open up to a wide variety of expressions. Now, there are no words being explained in the Pictionary because Honestly, you want to know what a word means in another language, you can use Google Translate. I mean, that'll do to get the job done. And as we've made, so we've taken all of these expressions that are seen on tripping, on go tripping, and we've explained them in pictures that feature trip and pin, explaining the other whole idea, as well as other expressions that mean the same thing. So we've not only explained them, but we've also put them in the situation. We've used them in context. So we avoid the whole problem with most people who want to learn expressions and slang in English. That's awesome, but it's ridiculous when someone tries to use an expression or slang in English and just gets it wrong. And it's not just about using it correctly in a sentence. It's about the intonation when you're presenting the idea. It's all music in the end. That's why all of all, everything on tripping has uh, has the sound factor to it. So it's hard to see here, but there is uh, an icon which you can click on. Get past. And we'll give you Tim's the explanation. Broke up with but you can check that out later. And he is very sad. So finally, there's grammar videos with everything you see that you can just, you know, if you just want to teach a grammar point or you want to start a lesson with a grammar point, you, want, you need to teach. Uh, the difference between on, in, and under to your students, or you want to teach them numbers, you know, just give them this uh, a video. They can watch it. They can watch it on their phones in class, in groups. You, know, you only have one laptop, that's fine. Put them in groups. There are so many different ways of using this. You know, and I'm online all the time to help people out. So that's basically what tripping is about. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Mao. Um, you're online all the time. I guess that's going to be um, increasingly challenging with the project finding more success. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. The, the scalability of it is something that has been considered from the outset, but I'm not going to bore anybody with the details right now. <laughs> All right, so the first question's coming in. Um, maybe just a quick one for Mao. Um, you already said students can use it on their mobile phones. Um, so you develop this not only for the web, it's basically agnostic. I can use it everywhere, tablet, phone, or desktop. Yes, exactly. Anywhere. Right now, uh, we're having a, some issues with some of the questions. I mean, you saw that there's some audio questions which you have to mouse over in order to hear the answer. And on tablets and phones, we haven't quite figured out. My programmer says he's figuring it out, but we still haven't figured it out yet. Mm -hmm. Then a don't want to use it in a bad way, but a traditionalist maybe asks Mao, uh, do you plan to make Trippin available on CDs so that learners who can't have daily access to the internet benefit from it? So maybe some of the developing markets I'm um, asking here. I think it's a, I think it's a great idea. I, I, I believe, like I say, Go Tripping is first and foremost, uh, a story of two English teachers traveling the world. And I believe that uh, translates very well into different formats. And I think, um, uh, like the, uh, the I, don't, I don't know who asked, but uh, the, um, there's so many people who don't have access to internet. I mean, I work with an NGO here in Brazil, and uh, the kids I teach, half of them are on tripping, but the other half, they just don't have access to the internet. So CDs is a great idea. However, once you invest in CDs, you have to go big. So I th I'm looking at making that a phase two or phase three thing. Or, of course, taking on and raising some money, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> that might be an there's option. always that. <laughs> <laughs> Question for Zil Sylvia, um, also, uh, pouring in. So, um, two questions. Um, 
how can we make learning effective by activating students' emotional needs and interests? And Sylvia, are you reinforcing their emotional intelligence? If you do so, how do you do that? Your microphone. <clears throat> Sylvia. Okay, I'll start again. Um, Perfect. <laughs> okay, so uh, as a language teacher, my job is to teach them English. So that means teaching them to express themselves. They will express themselves best when they feel comfortable or there is a nice atmosphere and a sense of rapport going on, but also when they feel so confident that anything they say or think will be valuable and will be respected and shared and will add something special to the class or the atmosphere. Uh, um, this uh, interacting in a way where you feel confident and you communicate with your teacher or the other students using the language or whatever uh, is a very powerful learning experience that is not just uh, reading something where there's no feeling, you're, you're giving yourself to the conversation or to the story or whatever the creative experience is at that point. So it's all about emotional intelligence and social intelligence, going from how you feel about yourself to how you feel with the other people. And I don't think, I don't think we should teach language without, uh, without teaching communication and confidence. Without confidence, there's no point. And I wouldn't want to do this job without uh, thinking I, I'm helping uh, the whole person to be more confident and more expressive. Now, how can we do it? We do it by trusting the students and giving, if they're not confident, we give them a little challenge and then we can make those challenges bigger and bigger the more confident they get. So it's really confidence building and all of the open-ended activities with the stories or music or whatever you can think of or games, those things uh, make students forget about being self-conscious and they're so involved, uh, it, all, it all fits together. And of course, if they're communicating, writing and producing, they also reach the language targets as well as developing their emotional or social intelligence, you know, which is this why I like doing this job. Now, I hope that answers the question. Perfectly, I think so. <laughs> um, at least uh, gives uh, her, I guess, some possible paths to um, to go down and uh, use with her own students and uh, to explore on this further. Um, Shif, anything from your side, questions for Mao or Sylvia, um, yourself or yeah. in the stream? Mao here. So Mao, of your first 150, 300 users, are you finding that they're from a specific demographic? Are they particularly kids who like games or anything like that? More male? Or um, no, not really. Um, it's well, the truth is, like I say, in the, the, these first 300, I mean, the last 100 that came in or so, uh, they're, they're more the users. They're more the people who want to. They're not really the people uh, that uh, are interested in the game. They're people who want practice. They want English practice. They want a different way to actually uh, practice English. That's what I've noticed. Because from everyone that, um, everyone that joins, there aren't that many. I mean, I've put an explanation video right at the at the beginning that says you have to start the game at go tripping. But I think there's there's also so much else on it that people just go wherever. And I mean, that is the idea as well. I want to make people. I want to keep people comfortable. But um, yeah, there's. Um, I haven't really talked to the uh, what I believe is the the the, the target audience yet. So I can't really tell. There's people of all sorts. <laughs> and how do you think to 
are going to find the target audience and where. Uh, so speaking a little bit about the, the business side of things, um, in this session we are talking about, as I said, innovative, non-traditional approaches and what are the reactions? Do people, um, Sylvia referred to um, her students, she is mostly teaching adults, often in a business context, context or uh, exam preparation. Um, are these people looking particularly for non-traditional things or as Mao uh, referred to, you're thinking about um, getting trip in into schools and so on. What are the reactions? Have you uh, argue, work against some, um, I don't know, barriers, breaking down barriers or is it all pretty simple that people say, sure, we like to follow your approach. No, 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 not, it's not simple at all. I mean, it is the biggest issue. Um, there's, uh, the, the thing is, I mean, it's a different approach. It's uh, not only, it's not only innovative or new, it's, um, it's difficult for, to, for, it's not that easy to grasp. I mean, one of the main problems has been explaining the, what it is to people. So, um, if pe and if people don't understand it straight out, they, they tend to uh, get mad at it. And that's, I mean, and most of pe most people, m the vast majority of people uh, I know aren't independent learners. And not only that, they don't want to be independent learners. For all the talk that's going on about, oh, how school systems have made everyone into robots, um, People want to be robots, you know, it's, uh, most people do. So I believe that like traditional language learning uh, is a huge market. I, uh, and if, if, I, if I were an investor, not a teacher, I'd be investing in traditional because there's more people there, the market is bigger. But having said that, language learning, English language learning is just immense. There's room for all of us. So I'm not looking to capture, I mean, I've built something that I know will work well for teachers who want something different. But I also know, and for, and for schools and for students, but I also know that they represent a small, small share of the market. But you know, that's fine with me. That's, uh, that's who I'm aiming for and that's who I'm keeping loyal to. Sylvia, some resistance maybe to your um, methods and creativity and storytelling um, or so something you have encountered or um, similar to, to Mao that you have to work on or put some effort into convincing people, explaining the idea behind? Uh, yes, I've had lots of uh, different kinds of reactions. Um, now, I share, uh, first I'll speak in a public sense and then as regards students. In the public sense, uh, I share most of my work online, apart from private courses. But if it's something I'm making for, uh, you know, my website or, or I just want to share it, it all goes out in the open. So lots of people see my work. And I've had, I've had teachers from different countries, like teachers from Tunisia, or Argentina, who uh, have taken my ideas into their classrooms, and they've got their students creating amazing things. So like, for example, I shared some uh, Prezi presentations and stories on Facebook, and then a few weeks later, or a few months later, um, I, get, I get something in my group from a teacher saying, my children made this, my students made this, and some teenagers uh, made huge presentations themselves and you know I asked her how, how did you uh, approach this did you have to learn the how to use Prezi first and she said no I don't know how to use it the students did everything and that's that's the magic um, they do they do a lot of stuff a lot of teachers on Facebook uh, take my ideas and use them in their classrooms so that's the positive uh, part um, I, as for my online work uh, teaching in a virtual classroom and doing more technical things. A lot of people are, are, are interested, but sometimes there's a kind of a ceiling where they say, oh, it's too much trouble. Or uh, it's hard, it's difficult because they've got so much work to do in their normal schools, uh, you know, 
or they don't get enough support from their schools. So the point is that I think a lot of what I do online uh, could be something that could work also with traditional schools in a blended learning situation where online teachers can help traditional teachers are not traditional teachers but creative teachers in traditional backgrounds help them to replicate kinds of things that we are doing um, a lot of there are lots of creative teachers because i talk to them every day and they've got brilliant ideas so they're doing a lot but there's uh, it's tiring or time consuming or they have resistance locally now as regards what i do with my own students who pay me uh, i just I, if it's a business student, I teach them uh, what they want to learn, but I present it in my way. And with Japanese students, a lot of people say that they're very quiet and they find it hard to express themselves. But if I give them a very small task to do, they will do it, and the next day they'll do a bigger one and a bigger one. And I can see the expressions on their faces because they have just expressed something really good. Because if you take four business words, that are kind of colloquial but uh, very expressive if you're a business person and they make up a little story with those words it sounds it sounds wonderful it sounds like you know a real life business person is making a huge presentation and it's they sound like fluent speakers and they they love that and they like anything i share with them as long as it makes them feel confident and fluent so i don't i don't try to sell any methods to my students i just take the program and then make little changes here and there and little challenges and then they just do it without knowing it's anything different. They don't realize it's anything different. So yeah, I think that covers different parts. Great. Um, so we are a good hour in the live broadcast. Uh, I, as I said, we want to keep the format uh, pretty lean and tight. So, um, Shiv, if you have um, some comments, some remarks, I otherwise I have one more question for Sylvia, but I would then say we slowly uh, think about yeah. wrapping this up. And I have um, one final mm -hmm. question that's coming from both of you, um, perhaps a controversial one. It's, do you think any classroom teacher can become an online teacher? So I guess that means, is the skill set of a classroom teacher enough to teach online, or do you need something else? Uh, Mao, do you want to go first? Yeah, yeah. Well, um, okay. Oh, I believe okay, so. Yeah. I believe so. It's, uh, t uh, teaching online is very different from teaching offline, I believe. Um, all the skills that you have as an offline teacher will be valuable uh, teaching anywhere, I mean, but you need to teach online. You need internet savvy for one thing. I mean, you can't do it without it. Uh, you have to know your way around stuff, but more importantly than that, you, uh, you need to be aware of, um, I mean, teaching is more, it's, it's a tr like, I don't want to sound like a hippie here, but it is a transmission of energy. That's what uh, teaching is all about, you know what I mean? It's, uh, and when you're in a classroom, when you, when, you're, when you can see people, like they're, they're close to you, that's a lot easier to pick up on the vibe uh, so that you can adapt and, yeah, make your lesson more relevant. Um, but when you're online, it's a lot harder, especially if you're not face-to-face. -face. I mean, if you're on Skype, it, it, it's, it's a bit easier, but uh, still, if, if you're building something like like Sylvia has done like for people for, that are far away like a, so you want people to use when you're not there like like I've done like m uh, most people online then uh, yeah there is so much that you have to consider that does not play when uh, does not play into an offline scenario you know what I mean uh, yeah and I can add for Sylvia um, also somewhat a the other side of the of the coin or the the metal uh, do your methods also differ if you teach adults um, who are maybe a little older say 50 to 75 years of age or do you think uh, the methods apply to to everybody 
um, who decided that online learning is their thing. Oh, okay, that's a very interesting question. I don't think I've ever had uh, any students about the age of 70. Okay, for students I've had, uh, they're probably, uh, they're businessmen, you say, uh, in their 20s, so they might be a lot younger, or they're about the same age as me. A lot of students are the same age as me. A lot of students are parents. So actually, um, yeah, I last year I enjoyed having lots of parents who wanted to learn English, and they were either fathers who were working from home or mothers who had little babies. So I could understand their situation completely, and they could understand mine, and we bonded very much on that level because that's the reason why I work online also because of my children. Um, now, of course, on Facebook, you know, when I think of how I interact on Facebook, uh, it's basically, it's all teaching. Uh, even general communication is teaching because I'm always communicating from that point of view. So there are a lot of older uh, people communicating on Facebook and people like age 60, 70 or whatever, they interact in all the storytelling and all the poetry. In fact, lots of the, uh, lots of the, lots of those people are retired teachers and they spend time on Facebook uh, sharing their knowledge of English and they instigate a lot of the poetry and the storytelling and everything like that. So if I had a private student in a virtual classroom, I don't think I don't think there would be any problem. I think that uh, this kind of open creativity is is there for middle-aged people or, or older people just as much as it is for children. If if you are that kind of person who enjoys it, okay. Um, now I spend my time with older people who enjoy creativity, so I'm not sure what it's like to talk to someone with a closed mindset who doesn't want to play. Uh, with the story or whatever, you know, so I'll have to find some older students and do some research maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but I find adults are just like children though, really, you know. All right, perfect. Then I would say, um, Shif, let's tweet out the survey once again, um, how people like the format, like the conference, the talks, um, and, and get some feedback. And um, thank our two presenters, Mao. Once again, Trippin is with 3P and without a G, so trippin.com. Um, Sylvia, you will find her both on uh, Twitter, ESL Brain, um, and on Facebook. Um, and I guess these are the best two places to get in touch with her. Um, and yeah. Otherwise, let's wrap the last session um, for the first LLTCon up. It's been a pleasure working with you all and uh, setting this up. And I hope um, that's a good proof of concept. Also, trying the Google Hangouts format out. And yeah, we hope you liked it. Um, I certainly did and learned, learned a few things myself. So, Schiff, some closing statements from you. Well, I think it's been a great conference. I think from everybody, we should say thanks to Kirsten for all the hard work that's gone in. Um, hopefully, we'll see you all very soon on next year in another conference with even more people. But thanks to everyone that participated. I think it's been a great two days. OK, yes. Yeah, thank you very much. And thank you, Kirsten, for everything, because you know you brought us all together to share this and try something new. So I really, I really appreciate that, and I've enjoyed it very much. Me too. It was, a, it was the best conference online I've ever been to, and offline as well. I like these better. Let's do more of them. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Let's definitely do more um, very shortly, and uh, I keep everybody updated on um, new crazy ideas, I guess. <laughs> 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 All right. Enjoy your day, everybody, and uh, talk to you soon, very soon. Yeah. Bye-bye. Okay, bye. Yeah.